శ్రీ గురుభ్యో నమ శ్రీమాత్రే నమ సభాయ నమ ప్రాస్ట్రేటింగ్ అట్ ద లోటస్ ఫీట్ ఆఫ్ శ్రీ కామకోటి భక్త కామకోటి కంచి కామకోటి పీఠం శంకరాచార్య శ్రీ శంకర విజయేంద్ర సరస్వతి స్వామివారు ఆన్ బిహాఫ్ ఆఫ్ శ్రీ కామకోటి భక్తి కేంద్ర ఇట్ ఈస్ మై ఆనర్ అండ్ బ్లెస్సింగ్ టు బి వెల్కమింగ్ యూ ఆల్ టు ఎట్ అనదర్ గ్రేట్ లెక్చర్ సిరీస్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఆన్ లలిత సహస్రనామా బై శ్రీ పిఆర్ కన్నన్ సర్ who is a repository of vedic knowledge we also have shrimati padma rajagopalan mummy joining us in this beautiful journey for rendering the shlokas of lalita sahasranamam with her melodious voice while kannan sir explains the shlokas verse after the other namaskaram kannan sir and padma mummy i'm really honored Namaskar to be introducing these great personalities who always have been supporting us in share and sharing their knowledge and wisdom many of you have already known kannan sir and have tasted the gnanamritam of uh, mukha panchasati through his lecture series english lecture series in mukha panchasati and the recent uh, uh, his lecture on ramo vigrahva dharma on the eve of pranapratishta at ayodhya of ramlalla pranapratishta of ramlalla at ayodhya a multifaceted personality shri pr kannan sir is a genius ietn he holds a mtech degree from iit chennai and holds a pg diploma from holland he worked in many reputed organizations in india and abroad shri kanan sir has very keen interest in our sanatana dharma and he is one of the sought after speaker on various ancient scriptures and religious topics in english both in both as well as tamil on various platforms shri kanan He is also the editor of spiritual magazine Dilip started at the instance of Shri Mahaswami of Kanchi published from Mumbai Shri Kannan ji delivers discourses on various religious topics conducted online lectures on Shankara Stotra Makaranda for about 6 months Adi Shankara Stotra's lectures series for one month Mukha Panchasati lecture series and on the cultural history of Kashmir including Raja Tarangani. He has also contributed articles to various repeated religious magazines with the divine blessings and directives from the Shankaracharya Guru Parampara of Shri Kanchi Kamakoti Peetham. He, he authored about 40 books including writings and translations which include Shankara Stotra Makaranda, lecture notes of select Shankara Stotras, commentaries on shri rudram and chamakam shri guru bhujanga stotram adi shankara ashtotra satnamavali amaranatha mahatyam shri pada saptati lalita trisati kanchi mahima pitrukarya a compendium of important rules shruti mukta phalam shrimad ramayana dharma sangraham commentaries of ashtapadis and way and many others shri kanan ji was also awarded the titles jagadguru seva ratnam and upanyasa tilakam we welcome you sir and and also to introduce our uh, saraswati swarupa padma mami briefly shrimati padma raj gopal gopalan garu is <coughs> from kanchipuram she is the daughter of adiya palam shri ramakrishna dikshitar who was a renowned sanskrit scholar and had served the shrimat during the times of 68th 69th in 70th acharyas of shri kanchi kamakoti peetham she is well versed in sanskrit and music and has been taking shloka classes for children at all sens and housewives for the past two decades her masterpieces include mukha panchasati saundarya lahari and shivananda lahari she dedicated her life her expertise and knowledge to her father and her guru mrs ram rama ramakrishnan in addition to tutoring people as per shri periwas guidance from across indian metros many people from around the world connect to her for learning these treasures we welcome you mummy dear astikas it is time for us to lend our ears to this eloquent speaker kannan sir in english the meaning of lalita sahasranamam in english a thousand word hymn on our universal mother i request kannan sir to take over thank you sir ృణాలయంకరం లోకశంకరం సదాశివ సమారంభాం 
ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತಾಂ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಸರ್ವಮಂಗಲಮಾಂಗಲ್ಯೆ ಶಿವೆ ಸರ್ವಾರ್ಥ ಸಾಧಕೆ ಶರಣ್ಯೇ ತ್ರಂಬಕೆ ಗೌರಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ ಎ ನ್ಯೂ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಲಲಿತಾ ಸಹಸ್ರನಾಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಕಾಮಕೋಟಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಕೇಂದ್ರ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ದೇ ವೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ who has blessed this lecture series as he blessed the previous lecture series on Mukha Panchashati, Vande Gurur Mandalam, etc. Now, it's indeed uh, my pleasure to be associated with this lecture series on Lalita Sahasranamam. Lalita Sahasranamam is a part of Brahmanda Puranam, which has a section called Lalita Upakhyanam, Lalita Upakhyanam, that is story of Lalita. It goes into 40 chapters, this Lalita Upakhyanam. And it is in the form of a conversation between Sri Hayagriva and Sage Agastya. All of it is about Lalita's glory, Devi Lalita's glory. And this Lalita Upakhyanam is followed by Lalita Sahasranamam, which we are now going to look at, and a few other Sahasranamams of Varahi, Shamala Devi, etc., Panchami, Stavam, so. Now, Hayagriva himself is an incarnation of Vishnu who came into being because of Devi's grace. This story is told in detail in Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. after uh, i'll i'll refer to it briefly after uh, waging a long battle with asuras vishnu became tired and retired in a corner unknown to anybody and he sat there with his sharanga bow supporting his skin and he slept off because of uh, his exhaustion and after some time he sort of stooped on this sharanga bow and the sharanga bow cut off his head he lost his head and that was the time when devendra brahma and others were looking for him for presiding over a yaga so they went and searched for him everywhere finally they located him here and they were shocked because such a great sound this calamity had happened they were shocked then uh, brahaspati advised uh, devendra to pray to devi so all the vedas who had assembled there murti mat deva they prayed to devi devi said this is all with a purpose his head has been lost in the ocean go and bring a horse's head and attach it get it done through vishwakarma that was done and then immediately hayagriva came into being this is the story so this was entirely due to devi's grace that hayagriva came into being and also he got initiated into devi's knowledge by devi directly now this is a conversation lalita upakshana is a conversation between that hayagriva and sage agastya and who is agastya agastya is one of the 12 devi upasakas manushchandra kubeerasya lopa mudra eta manmatha agasti ragni surjasya ಇಂದ್ರಸ್ಕಂದ ಶಿವಸ್ತ್ರೋಧ ಭಟ್ಟಾರಕೋ ದೇವ್ಯ ದ್ವಾದಿ ಉಪಾಸಕಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಉಪಾಸಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇವಿ ಮನು ಚಂದ್ರ ಕುಬೇರ ಲೋಪಾಮುದ್ರ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ವೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಗಸ್ಯ ಮನ್ಮಥ ದೆನ್ ಅಗಸ್ಯ ಹಿಂಸಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಗ್ನಿ ಸೂರ್ಯ ದೇವೇಂದ್ರ ಕಂದ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸುಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯ ಶಿವ ಹಿಂಸಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ದುರ್ವಾಸ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಭಟ್ಟಾರಕ ನಾವು ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ವರ್ಸೇಷನ್ starts with um starts with prayer of uh, agastya to hayagriva requesting for stories explaining the glory of devi that is how it starts then he uh, starts explaining lalita upakhyanam in lalita upakhyanam he start, the hayagriva starts with the story of how bandasura came into being this bandasura came into being from the ashes of manmatha when manmatha was reduced to ashes 
by Shiva's third eye, the Devas headed by Indra, they made the ashes into a form of a human being. Then uh, they requested Shiva to give life to that assembly of ashes. Then Shiva looked at those ashes and there came out an Asura, Bandasura. And Bandasura did intense tapas and prayed to Shiva and got, as usual, some boons. And then he started uh, torturing devas, etc., etc., the usual story. Then the time came for Bandasura's destruction and Devi came into being. How she came into being, Lalita Parameshwari. Then, because devas were very much feeling miserable, they prayed to Devi. At that time, Devi said, you conduct a yaga. That is why she is known as Siddhagni Kunda Sambhuta. That yaga in which there was a Siddhagni, there was a Agni Kunda. From that Agni Kunda came Lalita Parameshwari. And she they, they was prayed to her and then she agreed that she would kill Bandasura. And uh, because she, as a woman, she wanted to be, uh, Brahma and other devas wanted her to be coronated. And during Pattabhishekam, during coronation, a woman cannot be coronated on her own. So Brahma decided that there should be a Purusha along with her. Then who is the Purusha? Then they said Shiva should be the person. Then they prayed to Shiva. Then Shiva came there as Kameshwara. Lalita became Kameshwari. So Kameshwara, Kameshwari's marriage takes place, then Kameshwari becomes Maharajni. She gets coronated, Patabhishekam is done, then she goes to war and then Bandasura is annihilated. This is the story of Bandasura. After the story of Bandasura, Lalitopakhyanam goes into seven khandas, explaining the greatness of Devi. First is Mantra Khandam. Mantra Khandam explains the greatness of Panchadashakshari Mantra the greatest mantra of Devi. Next only to Shodashi. Then goes Nyasa Khandam. Nyasa Khandam, there are Shodha Nyasas, six Nyasas associated with Devi worship. Then comes Puja Khandam. Puja Khandam talks about Antaryagam, Bahiryagam and Mahayagam. <coughs> I had occasion to refer to this Antaryagam, Bahiryagam, etc. during my lectures on Saundari Lahiri recently. Antaryagam refers to the mental worship of Devi, generally associated with Kundalini rising from Mooladhara Chakra going up to Sahasrara. Whereas Bahiryagam refers to generally worshipping in a Sri Chakra, Meru or Sri Chakra Yantra. Now Mahayagam is the outer worship combined with the mental worship. Then comes Purasharana Khandam. Purasharana Khandam is about the Japa, Japa part. How Japa should be done, Japa Lakshanam. Then Homa Khandam, where Homa Vidhanam is prescribed. Then Rahasya Khandam, very important. In Rahasya Khandam, Hayagriva explains to Agastya that what is known as Sri Vidya, the Sri Vidya Mantra, the Panchasakshari Mantra, Sri Chakra in which she is invoked, and the person who is invoked, the deity who is invoked, that is Sri Devi, and the Guru who initiates you into the Sri Vidya Mantra, and the Sadhaka who is being initiated, that means how many people? Five, Sri Vidya, Sri Chakra, Sri Devi, Guru, and Sadhaka. All the five are one and the same. This identity is established in Rahasya Khandam. That is the Rahasyam. Unless you go up to that stage, you will not understand this identity. That is why he is explaining it in detail. Then this is followed by Sotra Khandam. In Sotra Khandam, there are Sahasranamams of Mantrini Devi, Dandini Devi, Lalita Savarajam, Many sotras are there, sung by Brahma and other devas. Many of them are there. Then this brings us to the end of Lalita Pakhyanam. Then Agastya becomes restless. That is how this Purva Bhaga of Lalita Sahasranam starts at this point. He says, Ashwanana Mahabuddhe Sarvashastra Visharada Kachitam Lalita Devyaha Charitam Paramadhutam He calls um, uh, Hayagriva Ashwanana, correct, nicely. Bahabuddhe Sarvashastra Visharada. You have explained to me the very beautiful, the very wonderful story of Lalita Devi. You have told me how she came into being from the Yagakunda performed by Devendra, how she was coronated, Patabhishekam, 
how Sri Puram was constructed, how Panchadishakshari mantra, all that, whatever we saw just now, all those seven khandas, all that you have explained. Now, you have not explained to me something which is very important, that is Lalita Sahasranama. Do you consider that I am not fit enough to receive that instruction or is there any other reason? This is the question put to Hayagriva by Agastya. Then Hayagriva replies saying, yes, it is very secret. Because it is secret, I did not unveil that to you. But since you are a bhakta of Devi and since you have asked for it, see, two reasons he is giving. You are a bhakta and you have asked for it. Now, he is also, this has been explained very nicely in commentaries. Uh, there are other arguments given by Agastya, I am not going into them, to which uh, Hayagreva replies. The commentary says that this Lalita Sahasrama and such esoteric mantras should be taught only to those who have Shraddha, who have Bhakti, number one. And number two, who have asked you for it. Now, a person who has Shraddha or Bhakti and who has not asked for it can also be taught, provided you are convinced that he is a deserving party, deserving student. But a person who has no Shraddha, no Bhakti, under no circumstances should be taught this. This is what Hayagriva goes at pains to explain. Then, he goes into the uh, a preliminary introduction of Lalita Sahasrama here at this point. I agree with He says, Puranam Shri Puramiva Chaktinam Lalita Yatha Shri Vidyo Pathakanam Che Yatha Devo Varashivaha Tatha Nama Sahasreshu Varame Tat Prakirtitam Puranam Shri Puramiva of, There are many cities being described in Puranam <laughs> but Nothing like Sri Puram. Similarly, there are many Shaktis, but there is nobody like Lalita Devi. There are many Sri Vidya Upasakas, devotees of Sri Vidya, but nobody like Shiva. Similarly, there are many Stotras of Devi, but this is the best. Lalita Sahasakamam is the best. Like this, he starts. Sri Matuhu Priti Tasmatu Anisham Kirti Aididam. So, because of that reason, you should. Chant this Lalita Sahasranamam every day for the pleasure of Sri Mata. How this Lalita Sahasranamam came into being, he explains, Hayagriva explains. Puraji Lalita Devi Bhaktanam Hitakam Yaya Vag Devi Vashini Muksha Samahu Yayidam Abravit Bhaktanam Hitakam Yaya for blessing devotees. Lalita Devi called eight Vag Devis, Vashini and others. These names we saw earlier also in one of our earlier lectures. And uh, I'll come back to it later. Vaishini, Modini, etc. There are eight names. Now, these eight Vag Devis were called by Lalita Devi and she gave them an, an instruction. Kurudham, Ankitam, Stotram, Mamanam, Sahasrakaihi, Yena Bhakti, Surayam, Meta, Jeffrey, Parabhavet. You compose a stotra containing thousand names of mine. And by chanting the stotra, when devotees chant the stotra, I should become pleased. This is the condition. This is how the sotra should be composed. Ityajnata vato devyaha shri devya laditambaya tahasya yad nama bhir divya yehi chakkus sotra manuttamam After all, these Vag Devis are also amshas of Lalita Devi only. So they were able to compose this Lalita Sahasrama quickly. Tata prova cha Lalita Radasyan devata vinana mama ajna yeva Vag Devyaha chakkus sotra manuttamam Then he called all the devatas. He said, because of my instruction, this sotra has been composed by Vag Devi. Satpatadvam tada yuyam sotram matpriti vridhaye. So, please go through this. Chant the sotra every day for increasing my happiness, my pleasure. Pravartayadvam bhatteshu mamanama sahasrakam. Also, propagate this sotra among my devotees. This was the instruction. 
So that is how Lalita Sahasranamam comes into being. This is the Purva Bhaga. Now, many Sahasranamams also have followed this, as I said, Varahi, Shamala Devi, etc., after Lalita Sahasranamam. But of all Devi Sahasranamas, as I said earlier, we have Mantrini, Dandini Sahasranamas also, part of Lalita Upadhyanam. But of all Devi Sahasranamams, Lalita Sahasranamam has been considered the best by all the sages. Now, there are many commentaries written on this Lalita Sahasranama, many, many. At least four are mentioned by Vidwans. And of them, the best is Bhaskararaya's commentary. Now, Bhaskararaya is a sage who was born in Maharashtra and shifted to Tamil Nadu. And he was he enjoyed the patronage of the Maratha kings of Tanjavur, who gave him a village called Bhaskara Rajapuram near Kumbakonam. The village was given to him in his honor. And uh, Bhaskaraya spent his last days in Tirubadai Marudur in Madhyarjuna Kshetra, which was referred to by our Acharya Swamiji very recently. <coughs> When he referred to Mahalinga Swami showing his hand outside from outside his lingam and saying Advaitam Satyam. So that was the place of Mahalinga Ishwara Swami, Trivari Mardur. So that is where he spent his last days. And a lot of stories are associated with his greatness. Now, this Bhaskaraya has written a very beautiful commentary on Raita Sahasranamam. And he refers to what is known as Salakshara Sutram. Now, this Salakshara Sutram gives guidance on how to split the words. Now, there are combined words in Lalita Sahasram. Now, how to split, where to split and how to split. On this guidance is being given by Talakshara Sutram. And the Talakshara Sutram itself has been explained by way of Paribhasha Sutra. Paribhasha Sutra by a saint called Nrithimmananda Yajwa. This Nrithimmananda Yajwa was the Sri Vidya Guru of Bhaskararaya. So that Guru himself has explained in Paribhasha Sutra. So he is telling very clearly how each name should be interpreted, where the split should happen, how it should be interpreted. So on that basis, Bhaskararaya has done the split and he finds that all these thousand names taught with 32 aksharas, 32 letters of Sanskrit alphabet. As you know, there are 50 letters in Sanskrit alphabet, of which 32 are the starting letters for these thousand names. And Bhaskar Raya is at play, pains to explain that all the names are mantras. That is why Lalita Sahasranama is a mantra shastra. So, see, apparent meaning is what we are going to see now. We are not going to see the mantra aspect of it because that is esoteric. Now, each name actually refers to a mantra, like we saw in Saundarya Lahari. Each shloka refers to a Bija mantra, which is not obvious from the reading of the shloka. That has been explained by great commentators. Similarly, uh, Bhaskara also has explained that each nama refers to a Bija mantra of Lalita Devi. The whole Lalita, uh, Lalita Sahasranama is actually a mantra shastra. And the whole of Sahasranama can be treated as one mala mantram also, because each of it is a mantra. It's, it can be treated as a mala mantram. Now, what are the subjects covered in Lalita Sahasranama? Apart from the general, the constant theme of bhakti, mantra shastra is covered, which is Sri Vidya. Then yoga shastra is covered, kundalini yoga is covered, and on the top of it, Advaita Vedanta is covered. Now, there is one speciality about Dalita Sahasrama, which is being expounded by many Vidwans, and that is, this is perhaps the only Sahasrama where there are no Sobha words, that means meaningless words. In other Sahasrama, you will find, like in between, you will find a cha, you will find a vai, etc. No, you will not find a cha, you will not find a vai in Dalita Sahasrama. That is the greatness of this. And no repetition of words, no paunaruktyam. In many Sahasranamams, you will find that words are repeated. And the commentators have been at pains to explain 
give different meanings. Though the words are repeated, they refer to different meanings. That is how they explain. But the fact remains that the words have been repeated. But here there are no words repeated. And uh, well, there are many, many such glories of Lalita Sahasrama enjoyed by many Vidwans. Now, uh, coming back to those uh, Vagdevis, the eight Vagdevis who composed this Lalita Sahasrama, I got the names now Vashini, Kameshwari, Modini, Vimala, Aruna, Jaini, Sarveshwari, and Kaulini. These are the eight Vagdevis. Actually, they are known as Vagdevis. Actually, they are the ones who were commanded to do this Lalita Sahasrama, and they are actually Amshas of Lalita Devi only. Now, uh, we will start with the actual text of Lalita Sahasrama. We will start with the four Dhyana Shlokas. <laughs> ಸಿಂಧೂರೋರುಣವಿಗ್ರಹಾಣಿಕ್ಯಮೌಲಿಸ್ಫುರಾಣಾಯಕಶೇಖರಾಮಿಮುಖೀಪೂರ್ಣರ
there is a group of bees ali is bees ali purna there it is covered with bees and it is full of that madhu and another hand she is holding raktot phalam red colored lotus flower raktot phalam bibhrati bibhrati mean holding saumyam saumyam means very enchanting very pleasing saumyam ratna ghatasya rakta charanam jayet paramambikam ratna ghatasya rakta charanam har feet are also red colored like blood blood colored rakta charanam and where is she placing her feet she is placing her feet on a ratna ghata a pot gem studded pot it can be interpreted in two ways it is a gem studded pot and it is a pot holding ratna it can be interpreted as ratna ghata can be a ghata which is studded with ratna or a ghata holding ratna both ways it is applicable because those are ratnas which she is holding for distributing among devotees now ratna should not be interpreted as uh, gems it should be interpreted as anything of value anything of value which we are seeking from devi is what is going she is going to give us so jayate param ambikam the supreme ambika there is no shakti higher than ambika so she is known as param ambikam adi shakti para shakti adi para shakti these are the various names by which we call her. ambika means mother it is the mother element which we should always be focusing our attention on because the first name itself is shri mata so we will go to that so at that time we will know that mother element is the best for us for from the devotee's point of view we should concentrate on the mother element jayate that is how we should meditate sindura aruna vigraham trinayanam manikya mauli sphurate saranayaka shekharam natamukhim apina bakso ruham panibhyam alipurna ratna chashakam raktot palam bibhratim saumyam ratna ghatasya rakta charanam jayet paramambikam अरुणाम करुणा तरंगित खी धृत आशंकुश पुष्पाण चापाधिरावृता मयूक अहमितिभावे भवानी अरुणा इज ऑलरेडी वी हेव सीन रेड कलर देवी करुणा तरंगित अक्षी हर आईज और फुल ऑफ कंपैशन वेव्स ऑफ कंपैशन कंपैशन कमिंग इन वेव्स karuna taranga taranga is wave that means what every time you look at devi there is a different level of compassion it comes in waves the more devotion you show the more compassion she shows so karuna tarangita akshim dhrita pasha ankusha pushpa bana chapam now in the first uh, shloka we were told there are two hands in which she was holding two different objects but here we are told there are four hands and she is holding four different object different from the previous one so that only shows that devi's form is beyond description she will come in this form or that form in fact there is a shloka in devi bhagavatam where when devi appeared before devas to so some devas she appeared with four arms to so some other devas she appeared with 32 arms and so devi bhagavatam says to so some devas she appeared as holding thousand arms sahasra bahu so this is not something to be uh, doubted this is something which should be appreciated showing the glory of devi dhrita pasha ankusha pushpa bana chapam on one hand she is holding pasha another hand she is holding ankusha ankusha means the the god pasha means the rope pushpa bana the flower arrow we are going to see all these in detail when we go to the sahasrama name chapa mean the bow the ikshukodanda that is the chapa the bow so these are the four items four things she is holding in her four hands animadhi bihi avrutam mayukhaihi mayukha mean the rays we have seen this in saundar lahari in one shloka uh, adi shankara explained that this eight ashta maha siddhi eight maha siddhi like anima etc anima mahima etc they are taking the form of devis they are taking the form of devis they come out in the from lalita devi in the form of rays mayukhaihi but after coming out those rays take the form of eight ashtamaha siddhi devis 
and they are acting as dwara palaki in the sanidhi of lalita devi they are acting as door keepers this is what uh, avi shankara explains in saundar lahari same is briefly mentioned here animadibihi avrutam mayukhaihi she is surrounded by rays who are actually the eight ashtamaha siddhi ahamitye eva vibhava ye bhavani this is very important for the devotee to get maximum benefit she he should identify bhavani that is lalita devi as being present in himself as not something present outside ahamitye eva i am bhavani that feelings you he should entertain when he reads this lalita sahasram sutra in fact for any puja this is required devo devalaya deho devalaya prokto devo deva sanatanaha this is the bhava which has been enjoined on any puja devotee the body is the temple and the jiva which is in the body is actually parameshwara himself so similarly here we should entertain the notion that we are bhavani when you are doing, doing reading the sutra chanting the sutra aham ahamityev vibhavaye bhavani bhavani vibhavaye you should meditate on bhavani in what with what sense aham iti eva eva that means it is enjoyable on you you should do only this way eva means only this way not any other way which way aham iti i am bhavani with that feeling you should meditate on her this is very important for getting the maximum benefit if you think she is a third person sitting somewhere in shripuram and then we are praying to her and then she is going to bless us yes she will bless us no doubt there is nothing wrong with that approach but the, what is the better approach the better approach is that she is seated right inside me she i am praying to devi who is seated right in my heart and she is going to bless me from my heart अरुणाम अरुणातरंगिताक्षी धृतपाशाकुशपुष्पाणचापाणिमाधिरावृता मयूख अहमे विभाव भवानीसनस्तापत्राक्षी हेमाभा पीतवस्त्रा करकलितेम पद्मांगी सर्वालुक्ता पद्मासना there are many asanas in which people can sit so one of the normal asanas is padmasana so she is seated in padmasana vikasita vadanam and her face is like a fully blossomed lotus vikasita means blossomed fully blossomed lotus vikasita vadanam padmavatraya takshim face is like fully blossomed lotus and how are the eyes eyes are very long ayata very long like lotus leaves पद्मपत्र आयत अक्षी हेमाभाम पीतवस्त्राम दिस कैन बी इंटरप्रेटेड इन टू वेज द येलो गवर्नमेंट व्हिच शी इज वेयरिंग पीतवस्त्र इज शाइनिंग लाइक गोल्ड हेमाभाम दैट इज वन इंटरप्रिटेशन अनदर इंटरप्रिटेशन इज हेमाभाम शी इज हरसेल्फ शाइनिंग लाइक गोल्ड देवी हरसेल्फ इज शाइनिंग लाइक गोल्ड एंड शी इज वेयरिंग अ येलो गवर्नमेंट पीतवस्त्राम करकलित लतत हेम पद्माम वरांगीम Karakalita lasatu hema padmam. She is holding in her hand a golden lotus. She is holding in her hand a golden lotus. Lasatu, the golden lotus naturally is shining. Shining golden lotus is decorating her hand. Varangim, all her limbs are beautiful, excellent limbs. Sarva alanka rajyaktam. She is having all the decorations which one can think of. In fact, Shastra prescribes. the best of decoration for women best of decoration what are the best of decoration what kind of earring what kind of nose pad what kind of necklace what kind of pudiyana what kind of kankana what kind of angada what kind of nupura everything is prescribed in shastra so she is having all of them sarva alankara yuktam sarva alankara yuktam 
satatam abhayadam here it is uh, printed as sakalam abhayadam but uh, the better version is satatam abhayadam satatam means always abhayadam means showing her uh, gesture of freedom from fear she need not show by her hand the gesture of freedom from fear it can be it can be by her emotion satatam abhayadam by merely looking at devi you will lose all your fear that is the meaning satatam abhayadam always granting freedom from fear that is even by going to her by approaching her all your fear will disappear always satatam bhaktanam ram bhavani she is bhavani bhavani means consort of bhava consort of shiva one meaning second meaning is she is herself the devi who creates bhava means create why shiva is known as bhava because he creates the universe so here devi creates the universe so in fact that is the, the first of the name shri mata means creator bhakta namram and devotees go and pray to her they bow down to her bhakta namram bhavani shri vidyam she is actually shri vidya the shri vidya is the mantra the pancha dashakshari mantra is known as shri vidya she is the mantra and mantra is devi that is shri vidyam shanta murtyam the vigraha of peace by looking at her you will develop peace why we go to temple and look at dev devas and devis because we want to develop peace because we our minds are agitated we are crossed by several worries now we want to get rid of those worries get rid of those agitations from our mind so we go to temple and have darshan now that is why she is shanta murti shanti is the most important virtue shanti is actually described in bhagavad gita as moksha itself ashantasya kutas sukham bhagavan asks in bhagavad gita if you don't have shanti how can you be happy how can you say you are comfortable you cannot be comfortable if you don't have shanti this is the question raised by bhagavan himself in bhagavad gita so by even having darshan of her you will develop shanti shanta murtim sakala suranutam worshiped by all devas obviously sarva sampad pradatri she is the bestower of all kinds of wealth all kinds of wealth sarva sampati so wealth does not mean only cash bank balance your house or a car etc etc which normally is our understanding of wealth actually wealth is anything which adds to the value of your life it can be moksha if you if moksha is what you on uh, or focused upon and if moksha is going to add value to your life in fact that is our that should be our aim that that is sampat moksha lakshmi that is ashta lakshmi we have isn't it santana lakshmi dhanya lakshmi so all of them are sampat only various forms of sampat and the final sampat is moksha and she is going to give us that also if we pray to her ध्यात पद्मासनस्था विकसित वदना पद्मी हेमाभा पीतवस्त्रा करकलितेम पद्मा वरांगी सर्वालुक्ता सततम भयदा भक्तन राम भवानी श्री विद्या शांतमूर्ति सकल सुरणुता अरुणाम जप कुसुम भासुराम जप विधौ स्मरे अंबिका जप विधौ स्मरे अंबिका हाउ वी शुड मेडिटेट ऑन देवी ड्यूरिंग दिस जप ऑफ ललिता सहस्रनाम दिस द फाइनल गाइडेंस ऑन ध्यान स कुंकुम विलेपना शी इज हैविंग कुंकुम लेपा ऑन हर बॉडी दैट इज शी ऑलरेडी रेड इन कलर दैट इज व्हाट इज इंडिकेटेड शी इज लुकिंग एज इफ she uh, all over her body kumkuma has been applied sakumkuma vilepanam alikachum bikasturikam alika means forehead her forehead is 
decorated by kasturi kasturi tilaka samanda hasite kshanam her eyes are showing samanda hasita that is gentle smile gentle smile is coming out from her eyes not from her mouth samanda hasita ikshanam dasharata papa shankusham this is already mentioned earlier that she is holding pasha ankusha and shara that is arrows and chapa bow asha esha jana mohini who is there who is not enchanted by devi's presence by having darshan of devi no one asha esha that means there is nobody who is not enchanted who is not deluded mohini mohana mohana is delusion there is a sense of delusion when you have darshan of devi you become one with her you cannot take your eyes off her you cannot take your mind off her that is asha esha jana mohini all people arunamalya bhushambaram she is having ornaments and also red color garlands arunamalya bhusha ambaram ambara means all over her body she is having different types of ornaments japa akusum bhasuram japa vidhau smare rambikam she is shining bhasuram means she is shining like what like japa flower like japa flower the red colored japa flower japaku sum bhasuram japa vidhau smareth ambikam this red color is mentioned again and again first it was mentioned as aruna then it is mentioned as sakumkuma vilepana then it is mentioned as japaku sum bhasuram why red color is coming for repeated mention because red color is an indication of compassion why it vidwans associate red color with compassion that is why red color is mentioned repeatedly so we are looking to her for compassion because we know that we are not qualified to receive her blessings but we are looking only to her compassion for receiving her blessings so that is being mentioned in this form sakunkuma vilepanam alikacham bikasturikam samanda hasite kshanam kasharata papashankusham ashesha jana mohinim arunamalya bhushambaram japaku samabhasuram jata vidhau smare dambikam now we go to the lalita sahasnama stotra itself lena lines mama om shri mahate namaha shri mata shri maharaji shri masimhasaneshwari chidagni kunda sambhuta deva karya samudhyata the first there are thousand names the first name is shri mata the first three names shri mata shri maharajni shri mat simhasaneshwari these three names refer to three main functions that is creation sustenance and destruction of the universe shiva is supposed to be doing panchakritas panchakritya parayana so out of those five the three are mentioned here the remaining two that is pirodhana and anugraha is or covered in the remaining 997 names all those 997 names are for the purpose of explaining pirodhana and anugraha only the first three names only are referring to this creation sustenance and destruction of the universe now first is creation of the universe shri mata she is the glorious mother of the universe shri refers to glory now glory is something three is something which can be interpreted in a thousand ways now the normal way in which we should interpret is the four purushartha dharma artha kama and moksha the four purushartha are shri for us that is the one which is shreyas for us that is the wealth for us aishwarya for us these four we should be after these four and the two artha and kama are only for sustaining the body not for any other purpose dharma and moksha are for taking our soul towards devi so dharma is supported by artha and kama artha and kama on their own have no meaning it should they are artha and kama or secondary subservient to dharma dharma is the primary one and with the help of dharma we approach moksha so this all this knowledge all this activity is guided by shri mata that is why she is known as shri mata she is the mother very compassionately very kindly she takes us on the path which will lead us to moksha that is 
So that is why she is not just ordinary mother. We have crores of mothers in this earth. We have ourselves had crores of mothers in our crores of janmas. Every janma we have had a mother. And in our future janmas also we will have a mother. Now those mothers are all no doubt very beautiful. They have all been very compassionate. They will be very compassionate. But that compassion fades into insignificance before the compassion of Devi. That is why she is known as Shri Mata. Now Shri has been interpreted in Veda as Veda itself. Because Samani Yajogam Shri Sahi Shri Ramrita Satam. This is what Veda says. Because Samani Yajogam Shri, the three Vedas, Rig Veda, Sama Veda, and Yajur Veda, Sahi Shri Hi Amrita Satam. These Vedas are Amrita for virtuous people. And that is Shri. Sahi Shri Hi Amrita Satam. For virtuous people, these Vedas, the Vedic knowledge is. Undying Shri, undying wealth. Shrihi Amrita, undying wealth. So Shri refers to Vedas and Parabrahma Swarupini. We are talking about Radhita Parameshwari, not as the consort of Shiva. This I explained uh, in detail during my lectures on Soundari Lahiri. That is, Parabrahma Swarupini is different from Shiva Patni. Now, Kamakshi is the best example I had said at that time because Kamakshi temple. The Kamakshi Vigraha whom we see is not Shivapatni Kamakshi, is Parabrahma Swarupini because that Parashakti came out from that villa, from that cave, and for the purpose of killing a Nasura called Bandhakasura, and then she stayed there at the request, at the prayer of Devas, that is Kamakshi. Then the other Kamakshi, generally known as Bangaru Kamakshi, actually is an emanation of that Kamakshi, and that Bangaru Kamakshi married Shiva. So though she is also known as Kamakshi, that Shiva Patni is different from the original Mula Kamakshi. So similarly here we are talking about Parabrahma Mahishi, Lalita Parameshwari. We are also going to talk about her being consort of Shiva. Yes, Kameshwara, Kameshwari. We just now saw it is going to come again. But that is the emanation from that original Parashakti. The emanation, the secondary form of that original Parashakti. So that original Parashakti, Parabrahma Sarupani, who is described in this first sloka, is actually Veda Sarupani. That is why she is known as Shri Mata. Because it was she who taught Vedas to Brahma. Yo Brahmanam Vedasati Purvam, Yo Vai Vedascha Prahino Chitasmai. Veda says this. Who created Brahma and who taught Vedas to Brahma. That is Veda Swarupini Parameshwari Parashakti. And on the top of all this, as far as ordinary devotees are concerned, she, like a compassionate mother, she gives us the milk of jnana, milk of knowledge, plus she is the remover of tapatraya, the three miseries. Because what is the benefit of a mother? Mother should give us nourishment, milk, food, and mother should also help us from. Uh, obstacles from difficulties facing when we, we are faced with difficulties, mother should come to our help. That is what she does. So she gives us the milk of knowledge and she gives us the uh, relief from tapatraya, adhyatmika, adi bhautika, and adi daivika. These are the three tapas which are constantly harassing the humans. Adhyatmika is something which is inborn, which is there with us. Mental. Adi Bhautika is coming from other living beings. Adi Daivika is forces of nature like lightning, like Bhokampa, etc. Et so, three types of miseries are always awaiting the human being, and mother is the one who is going to help us. Sri Maharaji, she is the empress of the universe who protects the universe. What is the meaning of empress? Not sitting in a throne. That is coming there, Simhasana Ishtari is coming. Okay, that is fine. But sitting in the throne is not enough. She should protect the universe, isn't it? The king and the queen, what is their main job? To protect the subject. That is the aspect of protection, the sustenance, the second of the Panchak Kritya, who protects the universe as Maharagni. She is Maharani, Maharagni. So because of that, she possesses the absolute power and authority to be able to give us the protection. See, 
you go to somebody for protection for help and if that power person is himself powerless he has no authority what will he do he will only sympathize with you isn't it very often we go and explain our misery to some one of our friends who cannot do anything to help us who can only sympathize so what is the use of that but here we have an empress who has all the power all the authority to help us so she is the protector of the universe shrimat simhasaneshwari the simhasana itself is shrimat glorious the glorious throne ishwari who is occupying the glorious throne now why is she, it is known as simhasana because her uh, of course all the kings are generally seated on simhasana lion throne there are two lions on both sides of the throne yes apart from that in this particular case simhasana has got a special meaning because for lalita devi her vehicle is lion and what is that vehicle used for for destroying the asuras isn't it she rides the lion only for destroying the asuras so same as simhasana shri is a term which has been interpreted as pointing to destruction destruction of the universe destruction of asuras during the normal time destruction of the universe when the time comes for destruction that is simhasana shri in fact there are vidwans who say that actually simhasana means himsasana because in uh, sanskrit vyakarana there is a procedure of inverting the letters so though it is written as simhasana actually what is meant is himsasana so the one which causes himsa causes violence to the causes destruction to the universe chidagni kunda sambhuta she is born out of that chidagni kunda now why it is known as chidagni kunda normally yaga kundas are known as yaga kundas only where agni is there agni kunda is fine but why chidagni kunda because that is where lalita devi herself is coming emanating from that agni kunda naturally if there is an agni kunda from which lalita devi herself emanates it has to be only chidagni it means knowledge satu chitu ananda out of which chitu is what is represented here because lalita herself is chitu and the ragni kunda is also chitu everything is chitu so nothing is different from chitu in fact indra constructed every large yoga uh, yoga kunda <coughs> at the behest of devi herself devi herself told him to construct the yoga kunda and conduct the yaga kundam yo jana vistaram samyak krutva tu shobhanam maha yaga vidhanena pranidha yahutashanam this is what lalita patyana says high grave tells this to agastya in the previous part so kundam yojana vistaram one yojana is 13 km that is the size of that kunda from that yaga kunda lalita devi appeared now why it is known as chidagni because it is only jnana which can destroy karma we have seen before jnana agni sarva karmani bhasma sa kurute duna repeatedly bhagavan says in bhagavad gita it is only jnana agni which can reduce karma to ashes so that is what lalita devi emanation is meant for because she is going to destroy bhanda asura and other asura forces in fact jnana stands for light agni and ignorance stands for darkness in all our literature so that is why lalita devi who is parabrahma swarupini herself appearing as appearing from the chidagni kunda in fact there is a beautiful shloka in one of the sutra antar nirantar nirindhanam edhamane mohandhakara paripanthini samvidagna this shloka is quoted by bhaskar raya in his commentary antar nirantar nirindhanam edhamane for agni you always need a fuel isn't it without fuel there cannot be any nirindhanam but here we have a very peculiar agni which has no fuel where is that agni in your heart in your heart is that agni nirantaram always that agni is there that is parabrahma swarupam mohandhakara paripanthini samvidagna that is the samvit agni chit agni the jnana agni the jnana agni will destroy moha andhakara the darkness of delusion the jnana agni is the destroyer of the darkness of delusion and it is there always burning brightly in our heart antar nirantara nirindhanam yadamane it is burning brightly without any external fuel so that is the chidagni that is the 
Siddhagni Kunda with uh, Devendra established, and from there she was, she appeared. Devakarya Samudhyata, she came up, she appeared for what purpose? She appeared for the purpose of helping the Devas. Devakarya Samudhyata, she was keen on helping the Devas. She was keen on helping the Devas, doing the work of Devas. Devakarya Samudhyata. This is what Devi Durga Saptashati also says. Devanam Karya Siddhyartham, Avir Bhavati Sayada, Utpanneti Tadaloke. She is known as Nitya, eternal. Why? Because always she appears for the purpose of helping Devas. Devanam Karya Siddhartham. So in order to destroy Asuras like Bhandasura, Mahishasura at all, she appears always. Deva Karya Samudhyata. Time is up, so we we'll stop for the day. We have made a good start with uh, Narita Sahasrama. After going through the important aspects of Purva Bhagam, we have now started with uh, Narita Sahasrama Sotram. We have covered five out of thousand names. The first Vishwaka covered five names. The, the three functions of creation, sustenance, and destruction, and followed by her appearance for helping us. We should not take Devakarti Samudhyata as only Devas who are stationed in Devaloka. No. All of us, all our karyas also will be helped by Dalita Parameshwari if we pray to her. That is the indication of that. So we uh, stop for the day. We meet again next Saturday for the English lecture. The Tamil lecture is there tomorrow, every Sunday from 7 to 8. Similarly, in Tamil, the same Dalita Sarasnama will be covered. Tomorrow we make a start like we started today in Tamil tomorrow. So ah. again. Namaste, uh, everyone. Guruji, uh, just just a oh, second. Yeah. I have unmuted everybody. Uh, uh, I, uh, Guruji will have some questions. So if anybody has any questions, they can unmute themselves and ask questions. Okay. Um, so Guruji, just uh, one. There was one question from Raja Gopal, sir. He wants to know the book that you mentioned or the sutras that you mentioned, which tells us how to split the words in the Lalita Sahasranam. Mm. Uh, what is the name of the sutras or the book uh, that you mentioned? Ah, the man of the sutra. If you go to Bhaskar Raya's commentary, you will find it properly. Instead of my telling the name, okay. you go to Bhaskar Raya's commentary. He is mentioning that clearly. It is known as Talakshara Sutram. And it is being explained in Paribhasha Sutram. The first is Talakshara Sutram. The explanation is in Paribhasha Sutram. Sutram. Paribhasha means uh, definition. What is mentioned in Talakshara, the splitting of Akshara, is being explained further by giving some definition uh, by this Vidwan. Uh, so, if anybody has any question, Bhaskara please unmute commentary. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Guruji. Uh, okay. If anybody has any question, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Namaskaram, Guruji. Yes. Please go Guruji, ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Guruji, um, Namaskaram. I would just like to ask, is it okay if I refer Lalita Sarsanamam with the book that has been uh, published by Radha Mention? The Ramakrishna Mention has released a book, actually. The cover will be in brown color. So mm. is it okay if I refer to that book? What is your question? <clears throat> For the Lalita Sarsanamam, can I refer to that book and, and recite my Lalita Sarsanamam? Can... Can we use that book? That is your question. Yes, Guruji. Ah, yeah, yeah. You can use that book. That is by Anand okay. Brahmanayar, published by Ramakrishna Matham. Correct? Yes, yes. The same. That's the book. That, that's a very good book. Excellent book. You can refer to it. Of course, okay, Guruji, Sutram, Guruji. Et cetera, he is not mentioning because there is so much of detail. For that, you have to go to Bhaskara. Okay, Guruji. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. Any so, other I questions? Think... No more questions, I think, no sir. More. I think we call off. Yeah, I just had a question. Uh, the Tamil link for tomorrow's lecture will be uh, shared uh, uh, in the group. The or WhatsApp group. It's everything is provided. All the details in the flyer as well as in the WhatsApp group. All the everything is there. No, no. He is asking about the link for tomorrow. Yes, yeah, sir. It correct. is there. It is given. It is the, there. Uh, it is given in the flyer in the Tamil yes, flyer. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Same, same link okay. is given in the Tamil flyer. It will also come up in our group uh, maybe now, tomorrow. 
ನಮ ಪಾರ್ವತೀ ಪತೇ ಹರ ಹರ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗದಂಬಿಕಾಯ ಜಯ ಜಯ